All right, so after our brief excursion uh, into VDBs, we're gonna go back into SOPs and VOPs, and we are going to actually be building some assets. So first thing we're gonna make is this seaweed. So the seaweed is also uh, used in the final scene. So as promised, we're going to start actually building some assets. So I have some reference on the uh, seaweed. It's included in the download as well, this image, you can download it. So this, uh, this was just used as a sort of a base reference. And of course we can sort of change it the way we like the look. Um, so I came up with this. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's just, you can see we have some branches and it's, yeah, it's just like flowing, like it would be underwater. So this doesn't use any, um, doesn't use any simulation. It's already indicated in this course. We're not going to do any simulation. It's going to come later. It's all driven by noises and stuff. So let's dive into how this, uh, how this whole thing is, uh, is actually made. Right, so let's make an empty geometry node. I'm going to hide this one. Let's call it, I guess, uh, seaweed tutorial. Dive in there. Maybe we want to sort of add our reference into this image network so we can sort of uh, easy refer back to it without needing to open the image itself. So you have this uh, thing here in the user interface, the image window. If you click on that, you get a window where you can sort of uh, yeah load load assets. So I am going to go to my dollar hip, I'm just gonna browse up to where my stuff is located. I'm gonna go into a reference and then use this seaweed thing. All right, so. Now we just have it here as a sort of a reference thing. And you can go, if you go to, always forget where it's exactly located. Yeah, so if you go into tools and you go to edit background images, you can you can change stuff. You can reduce the brightness, you can change the scale. So I just put it up like that and then turn that off. So now we just have something to sort of look at while we're sort of building. You could also put it somewhere else, but just something that might be useful if you're uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna be building something like this. All right. So what we're first gonna do is because if we're looking at this thing, it has uh, well, it's basically a line, right? From the as the basic. So let's make a line. So here we have a line. It only has two points right now. We're gonna we can leave it as two points. Maybe we do want to set the height here. Let's make it two point five meters. So Houdini units are always in meters. And instead, of course, we can set the points here. So this will add points. But we'll, instead of what we're going to use, we're going to use a new node called resample. So now we put down resample. And you can see we also get points. We can say the length or the subdivisions here. Or we can turn this off and then put it to maximum segments. And then we can dial in the points there. So that's kind of similar then to what, to what this thing is doing. So can just put up these the the amounts let's put it to 50 or something and the reason why we're doing why we're doing this is because this thing will have some extra options so you can see we have a whole bunch of stuff we can turn on down here so what we're going to turn on is curve view so if we turn that on and then go to our geometry spreadsheet here we can maybe just do it here in the bottom open this up and you can see we get an attribute called curve view. So if we click on this, it will sort it. You can see it will go from zero to one. And it will go from zero to one across our curve. So if I open up the information menu here, and let's uh, press curve view. It's not really new. So now I should get a visualizer for my curve view. And let's uh, change it. I don't want it to be a color, I want it to be a marker. Right, so now I have a uh, visualizer for my curve view. You can see the top is one and the bottom is zero. So this is a, a attribute and, so let me turn it off again. So, and of course it's an it being an attribute means we can start using it inside of VOTS. So we can bind it into VOTS. And I'm gonna maybe close this 
down a little bit so we have some more room to work. So maybe we want to make a uh, attribute fob. All right, so let's start by adding an attribute fob. So let's edit and then dive inside and then do our little standard thing of typing a turbulent noise. So the noise I mostly always use, put it in position, put it to 3D noise. Because remember, it needs to be a vector because we are going to add it to position, which is also a vector. So remember, a vector is three components, x, y, and z. You can always check it in the spreadsheet. So then we're going to add our 3D noise into the add and then add it into position. So you can see something already changed. So we have this sort of controls here. All right, so now we kind of want to animate this, right? So what we did before is we typed dollar $t inside of this thing. We, got, we promoted it to up level and then we did, did that. So to sort of animate this upwards. The thing is like if I type this in here and then go up, you see this doesn't work. Then we need to then we need to promote it. But let's say we maybe want to do it differently. Maybe we just want the slider to control the speed. So let's think how we can sort of do that. So what could we put inside of our offset? I'll give you a couple of uh, moments to think about it. And maybe we want to put in like the time. So if we put the time in the offset, so by default, what this is doing is going to be a float and we're going to put it in a vector, which is not like you can see it's sort of error. Well, you get like a dotted line, meaning we're putting sort of the wrong thing in it. So, but it does work. So if I play, you can see it, it, it does work. If you want to be more specific about this, we could say, float to vector and then what we get so if we put, put float to vector into offset we get three float inputs and we can like animate those and then we can put something in here so let's say if we just put the time in the y we see it just just it will just start offsetting in the y position so now we have a, a noise animating through the y position so it depends on what you want to do. Like you could you could put it in every single direction and it would start offsetting in every single direction. Let's just put it in the Y position for now. So we're putting the time into the float to vector. So very easy. So what this will just do, it will just fill up the Y component of this thing. So if we want to check what that looks like, you could say bind export. And call it you know, just if we just keep it called parm, it's fine. So we can see now the second component of parm is filled and it will be filled with the time. We don't need to export it just so you sort of understand what is going on. All right, so this thing is sort of animating, and like we can crank up the amplitude a little bit. But you might think that okay, this is probably not what seaweed looks like as the thing is also moving across the bottom and like seaweed would be sort of well, growing from the from the bottom right so that this wouldn't really be like what we're after like this is uh this is clearly not what we're after so let's think how could we how could we solve this this issue that we have here so remember we have this attribute called curve view which is going from one to zero. So from zero to one. So what we could do is somehow use this attribute to say how much this thing should move. So let's do that. So what we can do is we type bind. So bind will import an attribute. Well, okay, so bind will import an attribute if it comes in to the first stream. If we're gonna import something from the second stream, we need to do it a little bit different, but that's something we're gonna do a little bit later. So, but just keep it in mind. With bind, you can just bind anything that's on your on this on the stream in here. So any attribute that's on here. So let's type curve view because that's what we want to import. And now 
we have this amplitude here and let's promote this parameter so middle click promote parameter and then double click on it so we so it pops out so we have this thing and now we can put something in between here so maybe what i want to do is i want to put a multiply in between because i want to multiply this value by another value and that would be the curve view so you can see if i plug it in let me turn off this visualizer well, let, let's keep it on for now if i now play you can see that it will be influenced by the complete amplitude value uh, at the top because that is because curve view is one there so it will be multiplied by one and on the bottom uh, the curve view will be zero so it it won't be it won't be added at all so if i were to make this like super extreme you can see what's happening so i hope that's sort of clear what's what's going on so let's make this a little bit less extreme now let's put it back to sort of roughly what it was so right now it's doing this linearly across this whole thing so which is from zero to one but perhaps we want to some more control over like how much would it would it be influenced on the top because right now it's just being done being done linearly so what we could do is we could put something after this curve u to sort of drive how much it will be influenced so there's multiple things you can put in between there let's just as an example put down a fit a fit range so we're not going to use this uh like as, as the actual thing but just to show what it does so curve u has an input from zero to one so input zero to one that's correct right so let's say if we put this to 0.5 what this would do is it would make curve u over there 0.5 so we can show this if we put bind export call this curve view and plug it in there you can see now curve view will become 0 0.5 over there 0 0.5 and go to one so now the bottom will be influenced half now we and now we have a slider which we can control this with so now it will be influenced fully and now it won't be influenced at all and you can see the numbers change of course we don't need to bind export this so i'm going to remove that so we don't need to bind export that but just sort of keep in mind that and first time for some reason that keeps resetting whenever i remove that so but just keep in mind that that you, that you can sort of check those values that way so right now we're doing this just inside of here without exporting it to the spreadsheet and sometimes you do want to save it out because you maybe want to use these values later but if we're only going to use them in here we can just do it like this so instead of doing this fit range which doesn't really make a lot of sense because we do want it to be stuck in the bottom let's put something else let's put a ramp parameter let's put it down so a ramp can be uh, two different types. It can be a color ramp, which would be a vector, because a vector is a, is a, there's a color is a vector, it's three components. Or it can be a spline ramp, so a float ramp. And we are working with a float here, so we want to just have something in between here. So let's say a float. So let's put this in between. And maybe call this, give this a different name. Let's call it... Um, movement ramp or something like that so we give it a name we see the ramp here but if we go up a level so the ramp will also be there and now by default this won't really change and if we want to maybe because okay so if we but if we sort of move this slider now you can see we have control over where this thing starts and right now you can see it will like you, you won't see it in the curve view values, but we could, again, we could say that we might, maybe why not, might wanna export this to a certain value. So let's maybe bind it as a second parameter and just call it visualizer or something. And then just change our visualization for the curve view to be on 
visualizer. Right. And now you can see we have, so this ramp is influencing the value that's being used to multiply our uh, our movement, basically. So our, 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 our amplitude. So I sort of hope this makes sense, what we're doing here. So we can, again, we can increase the amplitude. And then we can make a little curve here to sort of say, where should this thing start? Right, so maybe make this a little bit less intense. Turn off our visualizer. And let's just put this back to sort of what it was. Okay, so now we basically have our main branch, right? So if we go back to our example here, so we have we have our main branch, but we, we also, of course, need these side branches. Let's turn this off again, go in there. So we have the main branch, well, now we need our side branches. So how could we do this? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about how you, how you would do this yourself. You can even try it yourself and pause in the video.